I'm GT3 driver and sim racer James Baldwin and I'm going to talk you through how to use manual gears within sim racing. Before we get started though, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel as always and hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything. But anyway, let's get started. First things first, and it definitely won't surprise you, using manual gears is 100% more difficult and harder to master than letting the game do this for you. It's one more thing to think about when you're already operating at a fairly high mental capacity with everything else going on around you, even when you've done it for years. Like myself, it's still something you actively have to think about to make sure you're doing it right. Perfect shifting around a corner you know really well might happen through muscle memory. But because every corner is a bit different and downshifting is about anticipating the track ahead, when you go somewhere new for example, you're going to need to learn the shifts again. That's going to involve a lot of trial and error and memorization. Get things wrong and you'll end up a lot slower than when you would have been auto shifting, partly because you're not shifting optimally and partly because you'll be focused on correcting those mistakes instead of the stuff that can't be automated like your line, braking or throttle. That said, everyone at the top level will be using manual gears and there are a lot of reasons for that. So let's have a look and see what those reasons are. The gains from manual shifting depend on the car, track and game, but you can expect the difference to be tenths of a second per lap, so it's definitely not to be sniffed at. So for comparing the manual and automatic lap we did, we don't have to look any further than turn one. So in the manual lap, we approach in fourth, the 100 meter board in both instances is our braking reference, we brake and in the manual lap, we downshift fairly quickly, we make the corner with great ease and get into the apex, allowing for a good exit. In the automatic lap, we approach and just as we hit the braking reference, as the car doesn't know or the game doesn't know there's a corner coming up, it shifts up to fifth gear. That's an extra gear you've got to go down in the braking zone. Uh, our engine braking's reduced because we're a gear higher compared with the manual lap and we run wide. So I mean the only way around that would be to brake a bit earlier before you shift into fifth but that's the kind of compromise you have to make whilst using automatic gears compared with manual ones. Another difference as well was the braking. So in manual mode, you can engine brake quite aggressively. In automatic, not so much. Uh, the game tries to save the engine and doesn't want to damage it. So when you engine brake, you stop a lot quicker, especially in GT3 cars like ACC. And as you can see in both onboards, we brake at the same point where the curb starts on the left and the automatic onboard, we run a little bit wide, which compromises that whole section after, Lacom. Uh, whereas in manual mode, we meet the apex nicely and we'll, we have a much better line through there, meaning we can basically be quicker. Yeah, it's clear to see that manual is a better option once you've nailed it compared to automatic. I've used my understanding of the track ahead to optimize the upshifts and downshift, whereas auto shifting would only take into account of what the car is doing at that given moment, because it's not as clever as me or you. There's also some more advanced techniques you'll be able to use like downshifting for extra rotation through corners and shifting early, otherwise known as short shifting, to put yourself at the best RPM right at the exact moment you want to make a pass on someone. Short shifting can also be used to settle the car under an acceleration zone if you're starting to lose the rear or front depending on what driven car you're driving. So that's definitely why you want to use manual gears and you should definitely make it a priority to learn it as soon as possible when you start your sim racing journey. But let's have a look and see how you implement it into your driving. Starting with the very basics and assuming you're using the paddles on your wheel, the right paddle is upshift and the left paddle is downshift. Though it can vary between different games and cars, you can generally use auto clutch without suffering any kind of penalty. With paddles, you only need the clutch for getting off the line at the race start, but it's worth doing a quick test in a straight line just to be sure you're not missing out on free speed as every car and game is a little bit different. When you're using paddles, the actual motor skill required compared to say a H-shifter is very easy. So you can really concentrate on getting the timing absolutely perfect because it is really important. Basically, on the straights, you're gonna to wanna to be shifting at the correct RPM. That's gonna be a bit different in each car. The rule of thumb is to consistently shift just before you hit the rev limiter. Once you start bouncing off the limiter, you're wasting time that you should be spending accelerating. But if you go too early, then you'll miss out on all the power that the highest revs can offer. Keep an eye on the in-game HUD, listen to what the engine is telling you, and if you're lucky enough to have a wheel with shift lights like the G923, you can reference those as well. Downshifting is just as important, you need to put the car in the best gear for getting through the corner and powering out of it, and you want to time this so you make best use of the engine braking. Unlike upshifting where you basically go until you run out of revs, 
With downshifting, you really need to memorize and take note of how many downshifts you go into each corner with, because each car and each track, as always, is a bit different. Engine braking is the deceleration of the driven wheels whilst downshifting, and it's a lot more effective than most people think. Shifting manually, you'll be at more risk of unbalancing the car by dumping a load of gears, but avoiding that is a matter of practice, and leaving it in auto means the car will be playing things safe, which is never going to be the fastest way around a track. Cars that have a gear stick in real life, like the Mazda MX-5 for example, can be driven with paddles in the simulator, but if you have the right hardware then it's actually quicker to use a H-shifter. You'll also want to make sure that you have a clutch pedal because those that use H-shifter with auto clutch are generally a little bit slower than those that use a H-shifter with a clutch pedal. The motor skills required are a bit more tricky because you'll be moving your hand off the wheel as well as using the pedals in conjunction with the hate shifter itself. As anyone who's learned to drive a manual car will tell you though, it's not as hard as it looks. It's a very engaging driving experience and you'll build muscle memory fairly quickly. When you're really comfortable using the pedals and the shifter, you might want to try a technique known as heel and toe. In the simplest terms possible, heel and toe is effectively using your right foot to work the brake coming into a turn. Engaging the clutch with your left foot as normal, whilst doing this you select a new gear and then continuing to brake with your toe while using your right heel to work the throttle at the same time, giving it a bit of a blip right after you release the clutch. That is basically heel and toe. You brake and shift at the same time effectively and that little throttle blip helps rev match the gear to the speed you're doing and that helps you obviously through the corner, sets you up for a nicer exit and it sounds harder than it is but please face your fear and give it a go, it's really not as hard as it sounds. If you're using a controller, you can generally use whatever buttons you want to use as shifters. With Xbox I think it's X and A and then the PS4 remote is Square and X. Obviously the absolute best experience comes from having dedicated sim racing hardware and Logitech G has you covered with wheels like the G923 with TrueForce. You've got paddles and shift indicator lights built in and you can also get a bundled pedal set with it, meaning you have everything you need. Depending on what kind of cars you're interested in racing, you can add a driving force shifter to that setup and you'll have all the components you need for any combination of game, track and car. Well that concludes this video, hopefully the next time you sit there in your sim rig you'll have a better idea of how to change gears manually and trust me when I say it's a game changer if you're not doing it already. If you enjoyed this video then please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and if you really enjoyed it slap a like on the video that'd be much appreciated. But I've been James and I'll see you all on the next one.